Welcome to the Indian Film Festival of Cincinnati. We are in our second virtual edition. Um, this is our sixth annual festival. And this year our festival has uh, 60 independent films made by amazing creatives uh, in the year 2020 and 2021. And the films are in the features, shorts, and documentary categories. Um, the films actually cover over 15 languages, including English, and we have uh, close to 20 women directors this year. With us today is the director of the beautiful film, Mother Pali United, Mr. Ajay Govind. Mr. Ajay Govind has made over 40 documentary films. His debut feature film was After the Third Bell, was just released in April. He's worked early in his career with Sesame Workshop India, with Save the Children Hope Foundation, and many USAD funded projects under the banner of his creative agency, WRI, which stands for Words, Rhythms, and Images. Welcome, Ajay. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be a part of this festival. Um, I mean, you've picked some some great films in the past, um, and it's an absolute privilege for us to be a, a, a for our small film to be a part of your festival. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, I personally enjoyed this film. It was sweet. It was innocent. It was a flashback to everyone's childhood, um, to the days when you know the little things just made us happy, and the fact that you you got this whole movie down on that little journey going from neighbor's house to neighbor's house, you know, picking up your friends to go to the playground to play, something that I did as a child, um, was just, in fact, absolutely amazing. I really loved it. Um, so in this film, a group of kids head to the playground, and then Ajay very um, cleverly shows us all of the little things that they encounter on this journey, uh, sometimes fun, sometimes complex, sometimes sad. And in a, in a way, it's a snapshot of our lives as we go through our lives. You know, this is how it is. It's, it is, and that's the way I looked at it. I saw it and I said, oh, wow, that is like a snapshot of my life. You know, you collect friends along the way and, uh, and, and things happen, right? Um, the film, I believe, is shot in Madhapali, which is a town in Kerala. And um, all of the children um, are debutant actors, I believe. And um, I wanted to talk to you about that. Uh, what was that process like? I understand they were all from a local school. Uh, tell me about it. So, so to uh, my first reaction, um, I love the way you kind of uh, saw the metaphor of, of the journey, you know, being kind of our life yes. of, of collecting things and incidents happening along the way. Um, you know the tagline of our film is the journey itself is a story, and I and I you know really believe that um, you know uh, getting somewhere and and what yeah. happens along the way yeah. is such an important part, and it's such an important part of anyone's story. Um, it and, makes uh, us who we are. Absolutely, absolutely. So so as far as the journey of of making this film uh, is concerned, um, it began with actually a documentary film that I was shooting in the in that very school in Madhapalli. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had gone to um, uh, capture a CSR program that had been run there and, and a you know, series of workshops that had been done with the children um, on life skills, arts, you know, the usual. Uh, and, and during that process- Let me process, pause you I, there. A CSR meaning Corporate Social Responsibility yes, Program? Right. Okay. The corporate Social Responsibility Program, which had already taken place at the school. Um, and I was there to sort of document the impact of that program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could see the impact that it, that it made because the kids were really confident uh, when we were doing, you know, our interviews for the documentary, they spoke very well on camera. Um, we were all outsiders to them, but they, they just, you know, they got along with us very well. Um, and that, that really was the starting point for me to conceptualize that this film could be made there because these kids seem ready for something bigger. Um, you know, a lot of the kids that you see in the film were kids I had actually interacted with during the making of the documentary. Um, and um, so, so it was actually this government school where I went to make a documentary, where eventually I transposed a story that I had written. 
mm. and then you know everything kind of uh, fell into place we we had a casting director uh, rajesh madhavan who's done quite a few films in malayalam in the past uh, he's got a very strong background in theater so he spent a few days uh, you know with over 80 and or 90 children that we met um, and again you know that journey itself was so interesting because we went out with a story about a group of boys who go out to play cricket yeah you know, because we were thinking straight jacketed yeah and we come across these amazing girls whose auditions were because there were so many more girls who came for an for the audition in the first place even though we hadn't asked for uh, female students in the in the audition and then i quickly kind of tweaked the story and i said let's make it a mixed team of mixed boys and girls uh, that adds many layers that adds other complications to the story as you know um, you know and other sort of themes that we can we can touch upon um and and really the film kind of just organically started to be made during the process of these various things the writing the auditions the rehearsals mm-hmm. yeah oh wow i mean it's um, it's such a it's such an intelligent um uh, it's such an intelligent story um as you were talking about the actors uh, and working with them uh, how easy or difficult was it uh, Were, were they more organic in their approach or did you have to stylize them so the the kids were extremely organic i mean the kids uh, we have over 40 debutants in our film mm. um, um and the the children were extremely organic i mean they uh, what was incredible is i think just because of how you know technology is so accessible these days they they knew how the camera works they weren't necessarily awkward around it or anything but um they also picked up our language very well so so immediately after we had done a shot they knew they would have to do it again so i could hear them mumbling reset among each other and then they go back <laughs> to position a because they know they have to do it again you know so the kids have really picked up the trick uh, from the start um with the with the um with the older actors who were who were first timers it's always a challenge because uh, an independent film is also made in a certain kind of a you know uh, rigor right with a certain kind of a rigor right so a lot of these actors had a lot of background in theater so to kind of shed that and and get into cinema acting uh, uh. took some time uh, and it didn't necessarily come and i think it, it took them some time to get used to it it took me some time to kind of get you know get them comfortable yeah. with it yeah. but but really the kids the kids which is something else yeah. and and even the you know apart from the debutants we have a lot of industry sort of uh, you know actors who have done a lot of films senior actors yeah they were amazed um, at the scene the scene at the police station um when the when the kids walk to the police station the the, the cop who plays that role he's done quite a few films um and i i remember when i spoke to him later he he knew it was like a three page scene and he thought there'll be multiple takes you know we'd put a track and everything and but mm. the kids did the entire thing the movement the the pauses everyone's dialogues one by one they were just spot on it was amazing yeah, it, was, it amazing. was so natural uh, it was so natural i guess and now it, it was really lovely i really enjoyed it um i was uh, that scene especially in the police station you know it's uh, and the little young boy who uh, would always pop in with his little comments uh, that yeah. was done so beautifully i, I really like that uh, did you actually sort of uh, reflect on um an incident or something that prompted you to get into this oh yes uh, into the story absolutely yeah yeah this in fact uh, the reason i used the word transposed earlier is because i i live in dehradun and i was oh. in dehradun and i was unfortunately um, attending a, a cremation of of a, of somebody that i you know of, in somebody's family and i was at the crematorium waiting for the family to arrive there when i saw a group of kids walk in um and and i saw and i observed them from a distance having a some sort of a long conversation negotiation with the guard at the at the crematorium and that's when i realized that these kids who had come with a cricket kit on a sunday morning uh, had come prepared to play cricket next to the crematorium mm. but on a day when you know unfortunately a bigger tragedy had transpired in somebody's home they were not going to be able to play um and in my head i immediately thought of course these are kids they won't just they won't give up they'll nick the ball somewhere they'll kind of play you know mm-hmm. in some little corner but but the thought was as they had come here on a sunday morning not knowing how their journey would end yeah. um 
you know the excitement the enthusiasm who's going to bat first you know last time you hit her this you did. so that that is where really this this entire film took shape in my head uh, and then of course i added i was able to add more and more kind of layers and, and aspects to it yeah along the way yeah wow that that was indeed um, a wonderful um i want to tell the audience you're also an anti-bullying, anti-ragist activist, and ragging is a term that's used uh, for bullying, um, uh, you know, freshmen when they come into college. And um, you uh, are in this Society Against Violence in Education called SAVE, SAVE, and you've organized many workshops, I believe, across the country. Um, and in this, in these workshops, I just want you to tell our audience a bit about uh, that history. Why anti-bullying? And uh... so, right. So, so uh, uh, unfortunately, that again comes from a personal, uh, you know, incident of of losing a friend uh, who had allegedly committed suicide due to uh, ragging. Although it was never reported that way, uh, and it was always reported as um, committing suicide due to a stomachache although the family and close friends knew that it was just persistent dragging that had been going on, which had led to that incident. Uh, and that is what really kind of um, shook me in, and, and kind of gave me this, gave me an insight into this, this really dark world, which is, um, you know, not just about a group of young 19, 20 year olds being on a power trip, but, but entire institutions, uh, administrations, heads of institutions, all being sort of, in this world where they feel that there are there's more good than bad that comes out of ragging um, and and i discovered and i in fact came across uh, save uh, at that time which is still a volunteer led organization we are a group of people uh, you know constantly just filing some sort of petitions and we are you know we have a lawyer we have an rti activist i do my bit you know in terms of workshops mm -hmm. uh, i also made an short sort of anthology film uh, mm -hmm. to talk about oh. the issue yeah so, so these are, um, you know, some of the things that we do, and and it's it's shocking how much, um, you know, the the ragging itself has validation from institutions, and that is really why it still exists, you know, in spite mm -hmm. of uh, all kinds of legal, uh, uh, you know, kind of the, the laws have been put in place, but mm -hmm. if teachers and principals and you know wardens continue to believe that a little bit of ragging is important, who decides what that little bit is? And, exactly. and we only get to hear about it when it goes out of hand, you know. Exactly, uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and and there is no joy in humiliating people, really. There, there should be no be. joy in that. Um, yeah. And it's it's no wonder that you created this wonderful film for us. Um, you know, it had um, the film. You know, brought out leadership qualities in the kids. It showed us how they empathize with each other and empathy is such an important trait today in businesses as well. And um, I was just thinking that this little film, um, and I call it little only because it's actually a giant of a film. I call it little because it has little kids in it. Um, it this giant of a film, um, really it could be used as a teaching film um, in schools and, and everywhere else to talk about teamwork to talk about leadership, to talk about empathy, you know, all of these things. Um, definitely, I think there's a market. Did you, uh, did you kind of see that happening as you built this film? Absolutely. So, so in fact, right from the start, uh, and even now, um, the film in my mind, because I also do training work, the film in my mind has a lot of elements that can be used, uh, that can sort of be, you know, opened up to discussion points inside a training room, uh, mm. you know. So if one was to show this film to a younger age group or a middle age, you know, middle schoolers uh, or high schoolers or college students or even you know people in corporates, uh, mm -hmm. for instance, yes. um, there's a lot of I think different aspects of of like you said, team building, empathy, um, working with each other, uh, you know, gender related uh, issues, ableism. We've kind of managed to touch upon that a little bit. So. Mm there's definitely a lot of things and that was a conscious decision on on my part i think because when i was writing it i knew that um, that a film like this can have a bigger role you know uh, mm -hmm. beyond just entertainment um, and and you know and just kind of watching and forgetting about it and and like i mean the fact that 
the the metaphor that you shared i mean it's going to stay with me because i hadn't thought of it that way uh-huh. so that's the beauty of cinema right everyone watches that it is, in their yeah. own way yeah yeah so, to me so, to me definitely was that yeah right right so um so i i definitely see that um that potential and i and i intend to uh, at at some point in time also reach out to uh, schools that i've already worked with um to do some you know uh, screenings where we can have a discussion uh, after the screening where where kids can kind of lead the discussion on what they see or what mm. they have learned mm. uh, because remember the the film also has so many moments where the kids are schooling parents correct um, correct right? uh, and, and the idea was again like if you if kids learn the right things in the right way uh, they're definitely going to be change makers you know yeah um, yeah they're yeah. indeed indeed change, change makers and you know it um, reminds me of the quotation the child is the father of man um, right. because there was so much we could learn you know from these children in 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 this film and um i did love i i loved uh, the beautiful um uh, girl in your film and uh, you know blowing the bubbles and that was a beautiful shot um tell me about her um so sitara's character um full disclosure that was a that was a little tribute to children of heaven um uh, you know that that moment of blowing the bubbles uh, was was a was a tribute moment for me um, so we we took a lot of time to figure out how to get those bubbles right <laughs> and i remember that there's a there's an entire section in the making about it um sitara's character was actually um it's it's interesting because the things that again you know the things that she has internalized like you know when when her mother's asking her to do the chores and she thinks it's you know something that she has to do mm-hmm. um she she initially has a very playful response a very child like playful response but then in one of her dialogues she also says you know how come you never ask my brother you know my brother to do it it does say brother. that yes um it does say and, that. And until that point she's kind of taking the whole thing very lightly you know like this whole mother in law marriage and all of that conversation she's taking very lightly mm-hmm. but the moment we see her we see how it really hits her is when she goes out and her friends also start teasing her about it you know and and her 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 you know sort of playmates when they say yeah. oh this is not the washing clothes you know this is cricket it's serious stuff yeah. exactly and, and later in the film we find out that she actually wants she is actually somebody who's serious about cricket mm. uh, yeah. yeah and the yeah. fact yeah. as mm. audiences like i said as a maker i had not anticipated a woman's team uh, mm. as audiences we don't expect we are expecting the girls to just kind of want to have some fun and play we are not really expecting any of the girls to be serious about cricket in the film or or sports you know mm. but here's a girl who's serious about it who's who's also kind of who understands her role in her home so she's trying to quickly finish all her, her all her chores mm-hmm. um but then she goes out and she hears the same taunt you know mm. from her classmates from her peers and then she goes out to the sherbet stall when they're sitting and having that thing yeah. and there again somebody's taunting these kids about oh you know now girls are going to play and you know you you're right. all going to play so so i think sitaras is a very interesting story and um, and priyadatta who plays the plays the girl the character um it, it quite you know in real life also quite yeah she's quite a quite a, a spunky kid um mm-hmm. you know she she knows her stuff uh, but she's very quiet you know she she doesn't kind of she's she's never um she's never sort of in your face she's very quiet she does her thing um she sings very well i remember she used to kind of regale us with with a lot of singing during the the takes mm-hmm. between takes uh but she, when we were casting for her she was the perfect fit for a role like that you know mm-hmm. because it it needs a certain vulnerability and a certain strength and and priya that was perfect for it yeah that that was indeed uh, indeed very uh, beautiful um there were so many different facets that you brought out in the film that people can you know learn from and i really appreciate uh, what you did um so i want to go back to uh, your goal for this film was it it was your goal you know just describe that was your goal to really get something this beautiful out was it some was it your goal just to get an idea out Uh, I know. <clears throat> let's let's learn a little bit about you, Ajay. Um, well, you know, the journey itself is a story. <laughs> to be very honest, yeah. Uh, 
that's that's you know that's what i would i would go back to because i think when i when i begin, i mean i look at the film uh, that we have now and i and i remember like i said that incident which triggered this idea mm-hmm. then i think about the fact that i was making this documentary and i met this wonderful kids mm-hmm. and i thought hey why why not make this film in the school because the school is already doing what i was thinking uh like this uh, a, a corporate social responsibility program would do yeah um and then of course it's a beautiful neighborhood right marpalli is a beautiful coastal village right. uh, so so in terms of visuals we have everything that we want yeah. um and then the important thing for me was bringing rajesh in the casting director yeah who did you know who did the yes. such an incredible job of finding the right people for mm. each of the roles you know we had no, there was not in fact except for one girl who was unfortunately in her 12th grade um so she couldn't she you know we had to change her in the last minute because she had her exams around that time um all the other kids were selected in the first round for the role that you know i had in mind and that was it there was no thinking and there was no second thought you know um and uh, so so for me when i when i look back at the the making of this entire film it was about this journey of finding a group of people along the way of finding these kids through rajesh um of course a lot of the team members are people that i've been working with for many many years you know yeah. tanveer who's my who's a dude who has been working with me for over 15 years we've been we've been mm-hmm. doing work together uh, but it was also about finding new people like anand madhusudan who did the music um mm-hmm. and and That's you know true. just his understanding of what the film was about uh, which comes through in the opening song you know um, i like that uh, a lot the, the, Yes yes the, I the also like team of I also like that you yeah. translated it in English which is very good mm-hmm. yes for yes. the audience no i think it's because the song has a lot of flavor so i i wanted people to un- really understand it it's there is not just some folk song but it's also again connected to what the film is saying um uh, in, in many ways so yeah for me this is what the film is really about it's about the journey of discovering all of these things uh discovering myself and my storytelling um and i guess one step closer to becoming a better filmmaker absolutely um, absolutely any funny incidents on set that you can tell us about um well lots uh, but definitely like i said one of the one of my one of the most endearing moments was the children you know saying reset before we said reset um for sure um, you know because they knew it had to be done over and over again um, nobody ran away with the camera or anything <laughs> no <laughs> no 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 none of that happened but there were there were a lot of uh, kind of moments that uh, you know actually it's the making of the film that i i'm reminded of you know in the end credits uh, i i i we wrote that it takes a village to make a film and i think that is one of my most endearing memories of this film the fact that there were these 15 kids or 11 kids in the central roles and and a few others and their parents they just they would just let us pick up the kids at 6 am drop them off in the evening no questions asked you know in the very first meeting that i had with them i told them what we are doing what our plan is what the story is how many days it's going to take and that's it after that not a single parent ever complained saying oh they're missing school or uh, you know that they haven't uh, i mean they're taking too long or they're getting tired yeah. or any of yeah. that you know? um the fact that that's the kind of support we got from that entire town of madapalli uh, homes were opened up uh, for us mm. to shoot in um, you know so many different things i think that that is definitely um, for me uh, something that i'm really going to cherish yeah cherish and carry with you yeah well Absolutely. thank you so much uh, ajay we look forward to more projects from you i i hope there are some in the pipeline and uh, thank you uh, do you want to tell us what they are or well it, it, my next is a, is a romantic comedy uh, in hindi uh, it's a slightly more uh, mainstream uh, film mm-hmm. um, if i may say so um, and um, yeah it's it's i'm i'm almost done with the writing so so that's where i'm at right now with that yeah well thank you ajay it was uh, lovely talking to you and i encourage everyone to see mother pili united it's it's a very warm um uh, enduring film and one that all of us can relate to thank you so much uh, for being here today thank you thank you so much thank you thank you